Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Elizabeth, where I have totally forgotten what the hell I was doing. Um, or even what my game plan was. I know I was kind of considering either like a diplomatic victory or something like this. Like I was thinking maybe we could get the Mahabodhi Temple at some point this game. I'm not really sure if we can make that work. We do have three good chops in here in terms of jungle. So that's about 50 production per chop, which should get me, you know, roughly speaking about half, halfway to finishing the Petra. So I'll go ahead and start doing that chop and I'll drop a mine too to increase my productivity. Even though this will be covered up by a commercial hub later, I think a mine right now is good. It'll let me get the Petra. And then once I have the Petra, I can start to put mines on these desert hills and then start to place down these districts. All right, so chop again, 34 turns. So we definitely need two more mines to bring that back up to a more reasonable speed. And then we'll chop one more time. So he brought that down to 28 turns in a single turn full of chopping, which is quite, quite, quite a nice achievement. I had a couple of settlers over here with the objective of, I think, settling out here west. In particular, I was looking for luxuries, like four silver over here. Am I, I am playing with monopolies and corporations, so that's kind of an interesting position to be in. So there's something to say about that, right? It might be worthwhile for us to do certain things that take advantage of that. I am going to start putting some units on auto explore just because the sheer number of units I have to explore is starting to take up like too much of my brain power on a single turn. Nice, we got our first city with 10 population. How are we doing on the diplomatic front at least? Um, looks like we actually missed both of the first World Congress things, which is pretty painful, which might put us out of a diplomatic victory because it might just take too long. We did get the monument in Plymouth. I think we just go straight for the Royal Navy Dockyard to get that gold income flowing, get that stuff online. We do have a thousand gold in the bank and we are researching buttresses and heading towards mass production. It would be great to get Kilwa, actually. I'm going to do a quick pit stop for Kilwa. It's four turns away and it's actually super, super important that I get this. I uh, get this started ASAP. Um, I forgot I was on a coastal map and I was doing a heavily uh, city-state based build. If someone else builds the Kilwa, I think it is necessary for me to go to war and kill them. Like basically, I just kind of have to get it in this particular game because of the way the game is set up. Right, so we did a bunch of chopping in here. Let me go ahead and turn off that builder lens because I, I just, I find it a little bit offensive to my eyes. Normally, sometimes I leave it on, sometimes I turn it off. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mine right here. That'll shave four turns off the Petra. I'll put another mine down. That's another two turns. I can't put a mine here, but that's fine. Let me have a look at the productivity of this city. I'm going to say focus on food and production. And then I'm going to go ahead and start mining up these hills. We got that down to 15 turns. I reckon if I take off food priority and put on production priority as we place down more mines we will get the city to go faster i think if i put down one more mine here yes i'll stop working the rice but that will shave another few turns off the petra i think so a 15 turn petra that's actually a really good time on that let's pop down the plantation over here in plymouth maybe i should have chopped that first before i placed it it would have been kind of efficient to do that but these are the things you think of after you do action we have researched engineering so we have access to the aqueduct now there are certain places that i want to build the aqueduct we also have access to theology giving us access to scripture temples and the mahabodhi temple i think we're going to pivot away from the diplomatic victory and we might look for some other victory condition here now, we are in a golden age that's providing us with a huge amount of resources, so we do need to consider that. Can we get ourselves another golden age? It would be really nice if we could, so maybe I should stop building settlers in London and see if I can squeak out a wonder or something. Something era score related, right? When do I unlock the privateer? The privateer is unlocked at mercantilism, which is quite a few technologies away. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that before this era ends. There's 26, there's, there's 26 to 46 turns left in this era, right? And I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off. I did meet Chinguetti. And this could be a very helpful way for me to generate error, uh, not error score, sorry, um, faith this game. It could be good to go generate some faith. I definitely want to be suzerain of Nazca, because there's quite a few deserts around that I could make use of, right? There's a few flatlands. There's a flatland here, flatland here. And you, you imagine, right, the, the Nazca line, right? It gives you plus one faith to adjacent tiles, plus one faith to adjacent tiles with a resource, uh, plus one production to flat tiles after mass production. So theoretically, building a Nazca line here, that's like plus two faith, plus one production. This is another plus three faith, potentially plus four faith, and plus two production. So there's like a little bit of resources here with Nazca if I take control of them. I do want to just slap down as many envoys as I can, but maybe critical suzerainties might be a good idea. Let me have a little look here. Is there anyone I could take over that would provide me an immediate benefit? I mean, Nazca, obviously. I think Chinguetti has a lot of potential here because of the faith scaling on our trade route. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. We don't have much use for faith, but we can buy great people with them. Like we can get Marco Polo. For sure we want Marco Polo because he's going to give us extra trade route capacity and foreign trade routes to the city, provide plus two gold to both cities, which will make my capital city much more attractive for trade. Unfortunately, we did miss out on the Colossus, which doesn't feel good. Um, we missed out on quite a few things, but I think we're in generally a good position. I'm feeling like we have so much gold, so much 
potential we can do with our empire. Like, we could come into Liverpool here, and I could buy a watermill, boom. And that might uh, give me a little bit of production. I might be able to buy a granary, and that'll give me a little bit of housing, a little bit of food. It'll make the city grow faster, right? I can I, I can set myself up for success here. I can bring it down to 12 turns, and the city is at neutral food rather than not growing. Um, I could harvest this maize, right? 200, 200 gold right there to pay for other things. Like the city of Leeds. Maybe Leeds needs a granary, right? It's in the process of building a monument. What if I bought the granary in here? Boom. Now the city's growing in eight turns instead of 12, and it has two more housing, so it'll continue to grow. And, you know, I, I continue to pop down fishing boats. Now it can go up to six housing, right? We, we're getting a lot of potential in here. Just spending a little bit of gold here, there, everywhere, it can do a lot. Um, I definitely need to get to banks. I need to go like Kilwa shipyards into banks. That's got to be the route so that we can make use of the Gilded Vault building. Now the Gilded Vault, I believe it's just basically a bank that has, right, plus five gold, plus one citizen slot. You get the extra great merchant slot, but you also get the culture equal to its gold adjacency and having a harbor will give you plus one trade route capacity. So that's like super, super, super good for trade routes. You know, we are going for a heavy trade game. Let's have a look and see what we can do in terms of era score. So um, we need to unleash the potential of horses and niter. We could research a technology from the Renaissance era. Let me have a look there. Yeah, we're going to get mass production, so that'll be an era score. We might be able to crack out a couple of old world wonders. I think I think we're just going to struggle. We're going to struggle to get the uh, the what we need to get that golden age. I'll, I'll give it my 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 honest attempt though. There's iron working giving us access to Jebel Barkal. We might be able to build Jebel Barkal in Liverpool after the Petra. I think that has potential as an idea. I'm thinking like, what if I did a um. Yeah, Jebba Barkal in this city would be okay, I think. Like, if I put a mine here, and I put a mine here, and I put a Jebba Barkal, like, here... Let me let me do some scanning. Let me uh, let me do some city overlapping. Yeah, I think it would be better to put the Jebba Barkal here, because it'll hit three city. So I'm going to move that over here, and it provides four faith to all cities that are within, within six tiles. I am kind of going for a little bit of faith here, but it's not necessary. Uh, Marco Polo. It's just, I, I find that faith can be a versatile yield. There's no reason not to get it. Uh, now, I could use him to build a industry or a corporation, but that would have to be at economics. So I think we can just go ahead and make use of him. That extra trader, super helpful. London to Hattusa. Let me have a look at Hattusa. Yeah, I, I could take suzerainty of Hattusa, and that wouldn't be terrible, especially if I'm going to be taking up some other stuff. So let me have a look. Yeah, London to Hattusa, that's 22 gold per turn. That's a massive, massive trade route. Really, really good. I definitely need to grow my capital um, more. Ooh, I could get Jebel Barkal in the capital. Now, let me have a look at that. If we're going to do that, it's only a two city overlap. But honestly, the fact that I can build it in 12 turns is really handy. Now, I wonder, does Elizabeth's ability scale for every specialty district? Okay, so building things like aqueducts does not help her ability. Um, but yeah, we could go for the Jebel Barkal. We don't have the Settler card plugged in. We could get Builders. We could go for Settlers. We can Faith Purchase Settlers, technically. Um, we could technically Faith Purchase, like, all civilian units. Mostly, I would be building the Jebel Barkal for early era score. Is it worth it to put 12 turns of production into something for three era score? I think so. I definitely also need more horses. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here. I'm going to buy this horse tile. And this will allow me to build a horse unit in a few turns as well to get plus one era score. So I'm, I'm playing for era score right now. I'm going to build the Jebel Barkal in London just because I can build it here relatively quickly. I have a settler that I can pop out. I was tempted to settle over here on this desert island. It's a pretty terrible city, like by normal metrics. And we don't have many good options. I could maybe get a settler all the way down here. Um, but I think, honestly, sending stuff out to the west, because there's a ton of, like, really good island land out here west, that might be the move. I would also like to secure these two honey resources. But the loyalty pressure with him... Do I have alliances yet? No. What if I researched civil service? Then by the time my settler got over there, I could maybe get a culture alliance with Canada. And that would open up the ability to settle here and have a bulwark city against Canada's situation. Also, I don't like that this settler is kind of mooching on over. So I think I'd like to secure these two extra sources of honey, just because they have a lot of potential, to deny tourism from other people. So there's Kilwa Kisawani. Where do I want to build that? Production in here is 20, 31. I could build it in 21 turns in London. I do have a couple of chops available. I don't have my Diplo quarter yet, which is kind of upsetting. I think the Kilwa is more important than the Jebel, so I'm going to prioritize the Kilwa. I'm also going to come in here, um, and I'd like to plug in... Oh, I only have Ancient and Classical Wonders. What do I need? I probably need to get Monarchy, right? Yeah, I need to get Monarchy to get Gothic Architecture. That'd be a 15% boost. So let's do Civil Service into Mercenaries into Divine Right. I want that Gothic Architecture card, and then we'll go for Exploration. We do need a second Caravel here. I think I'd like to buy my second Caravel from this city-state. They are offering a Caravel for 600 gold, which is a really damn good price. I'm trying to navigate my way through the whole tech tree and all these things. Just, it's it's a very careful, delicate balancing game you have to do. You have to kind of, it's, it's like a dance, you know? You gotta, you gotta step at the right pace in the right place. 
places and you gotta you, know, you shift your weight around. That's what it feels when I'm playing Civ, man. It feels like I'm doing a dance. I'm dancing. There's civil service, so we have alliances available. Um, I'm not going to go for the alliance with Canada until I feel like it's the moment to do so. We did manage to get an encampment in Manchester. Now, I believe this was mostly for city-state quests. We need to build a catapult and a horseman, and that'll help boost our suzerainty. Entertainment complex, artist, scientist, writer. Trade routes are potential. They have a barb camp they want to clear. Inspiration for Divine Right. I'm probably never going to get that inspiration, so we just want to research that to clear it. I can definitely go for a catapult and a horseman, though. I think I'm going to build a stable in here because that will activate all of these plus one productions from all these military city-states. That's one, two, three extra production, plus the actual plus one production from the stable itself. That's plus four production towards units. That's a significant, like a 30 to 40% increase in production here. And then we'll be able to get that catapult and a horseman pretty quickly here in Manchester. I don't think Manchester has much else that it needs to build right now. I mean, I don't need to go for an aqueduct. Yeah, it's like, it's just not busy. So we're fine. I definitely want the silk. It feels right to me. I want the silver as well. Yeah, I want to have a settler in position on this island here as well, uh, as a buffer city against... Canada. So I'm going to... You don't have another district to place, so I'm going to go ahead and faith purchase your settler that we can move up here. I always need to be on the lookout for if I'm working unimproved tiles, because that's a symbol that I should buy a builder. We did find Antan and Arivo. They want me to get a Eureka for Buttress. I am building a classical era or later wonder in the Petra, but this would delay me getting mass production. So I don't think delaying getting my shipyards is worth it in this context. I do not think so. And I need to start stockpiling gold so that I can buy shipyards, especially in my capital and places like that. There's mercenaries. Um, Trade Confederation is honestly a really good card for me. Like it's six, six, product, uh, six science and six culture. I think that's better than six production at, as it currently stands. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. We probably don't need discipline. We could plug something else in like charismatic leader to allow my influence points to grow faster. I'd love to build the Patala Palace. I think it's over here at Astronomy. The plus one diplomatic policy slot would be amazing for this particular game. So we got Regenda Chola here. Plus three strength for all naval units. That's a great one to pick up. I've gotten the majority of the great admirals in the game. And the nice thing is that that also gives me error score. I'm 11 error score from getting a golden age, which is fantastic. I'm going to take the plus three combat strength. I've got two envoys and I want to take suzerainty of city states that have never had a suzerain because that will get me another two error score per city state. So boom, boom, that brings me up to 74 out of 81. So I think we're well on our way to getting the golden age that we want to hit. But this man at arms is in the way. Um, why don't you loop up this way? So we're trading with Mogadishu as it currently stands. I think it would be good to trade with Hong Kong, A, for the envoy, B, for the gold, but also for the trading post that I'll have in 58 turns that'll allow me to trade even further away with Hong Kong and stuff like that. Right, we managed to heal this boat up. Let's keep keep exploring. Ah, there we go. I can hire another Caraval, and that should be the boost for exploration that we were looking for. Beautiful. And uh, honestly, Caravals are really good units uh, for defending your borders and protecting your cities. And exploration. They're just, they're just good all around. Especially if you want to do anything on a naval map, all that stuff. We have really good exploration, though. We, like, see the majority of the map. Uh, let's go ahead and place our Royal Navy Dockyard in Leeds. I totally forgot that that was something I was meant to do. We have the monument. We have the granary. Uh, the city really just needs to get to work on its infrastructure. Perfect. Leeds, you're on your way, baby. Trying to think what the best tile to settle on is here. I think it might be best to settle on the silk. If I settle the silk, I have a ton of fishing boats available to me. One, two, three, four, five, six fishing boats, plus some decent hill tiles. Yeah, there's buttresses. We have access to dams now. Not that this map is really damn heavy. Um, like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a map where you need to do damn stuff. I'm going to go ahead and buy this tile and put a mine on it, um, because it might open up the potential for a little bit of a faster moment here. Yeah, we're still working that food. That's fine. Uh, and now I think it's time we get the culture. Oh, he's coming to settle and take these honey. Can I block this? Hopefully I can. I just really want to get these two honey resources. I mean, I already have access to... I actually don't have access to honey, believe it or not, actually. Oh, oh, never mind. Let's talk to Korea and get open borders with them. So who's the scary character in the game right now? Um, I would say it's probably Babylon. He's got over 100 in both categories of technology and a relatively okay army. So he, he's kind of like public enemy number one right now for me. He's, he's the guy I got to watch out for. So there's Divine Right. And importantly, there is the card. I'm going to drop Trade Confederation. Well, no, I need to keep my harbor adjacency. I'm going to drop Trade Confederation in favor of Gothic Architecture because I am building a couple of wonders and that will shave a few turns off Kilwa. I would like to build up my relationship with like Johannesburg next. So where could I get an envoy in my tech tree? Okay, there's no envoys left in here. Um, we're going to go for exploration into guilds. We want exploration because we want the Merchant Republic government form. And we want guilds because we want that governor title right here. The other stuff that comes along with it is quite nice. And then we're going to maybe look towards go uh, diplomatic service as our next direction. Let's talk to Canada. Let's go for a cultural alliance with them. 
We'll go ahead and do a deal with you, bud. And now I can settle this city here without regret or issue, which is exactly what I wanted to do because I'm trying to box him in a little bit. Now, naturally, he's going to be looking to expand outwards now that he is is unleashed, so to speak. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of gold here to accelerate the city. I'm going to buy a water mill that'll shave 10 turns off the Royal Navy Dockyard. I'll buy a granary and that'll shave quite a bit of time after the growth. And I'll buy a monument to give this city a really, really good head start. Um, this city should develop incredibly quickly, just so I can get that dockyard up and running nice and quickly. Um, we could promote Pingala with grants. It's not the thing I definitely want to do. I think I would be more interested in saving for indoctrination or potentially taking aquaculture on Liang so I can start doing fishery spam in the city of Birmingham. Um, this will give me a good use for my faith. I can start dropping down fisheries. The fishery gives you plus one food, half a housing, and plus one food if it's adjacent to a sea resource. So there is something to be said there. Did I not build the mausoleum? Did someone else build the mausoleum? Hold on. Oh, why aren't I building the mausoleum in Birmingham? Am I dumb? I think I'm dumb. I don't know how I messed that up. Genuinely. So I'm trying to block Canada Settler from getting up onto the land. And I think it's working. They want to go here. Uh, but I want to go like here or something, something in this area, right? I'm hoping I can sneak over here and steal this honey. I think this would be a pretty good city right? I settle here. I drop in Royal Navy Dockyard. I drop myself a nice commercial hub that's nice adjacency. And then I drop a campus, right? Then we're looking at a potentially a science victory. There's a, there's a few different things we could do. We could also pivot to domination. Like we could do a top half of the tech tree, like aircraft domination, aircraft Navy domination transition. We have the gold income. We have the trade routes uh, to support it. And we have the support of city states as well. So like, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of potential directions we can take this. And I think that's one of the, one of the things that I would like to see if there's a next Civ game, right? Whatever, whatever the game is, if it's coming, I would love to see being able to transition from one gameplay style from another. I feel like one of the things that bothers me a little bit about Civ is that like turn one, I know what I'm doing. Turn 80. You know what I mean? If I'm doing a science game, I know like the, it's a, again, it's like a dance. I know the routine. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy a lighthouse and then I'll faith buy a trader based on what my best trade route is. So Birmingham into Mogadishu and I prefer city states. All right, let's faith purchase a trader in here. Perfect. And now we can start slapping down those fisheries. Now those fisheries will be worth a lot of extra food and plus one production too. I want the city to be on production focus above all else at first. And then we'll look into what we can do. We got the Royal Navy Dockyard in Plymouth. Let's go for the granary to allow the city to grow. Actually, I think I'll get the water mill because I need that, that, that tiny one production per turn actually really adds up over the course of a game. Some people think it's insignificant, but I really do think it matters. I'm going to chop here for the 77 uh, production. That'll bring this down to an eight turn build on the Royal Navy Dockyard. That's beautiful. Perfect. Immaculate. The word immaculate is just a really beautiful word, word in my opinion, you know? It has a certain, like, a, a certain appeal to it. It's like, oh, that's immaculate, darling. Yes, darling. Also, can we all just agree that it's really fun to talk like a camp person? Like a, like a, like a sassy camp person? That's just something we all agree with, right? That being like, oh my god, darling, you look gorgeous. <sighs> Oh, we got him, level so. <laughs> That's just fun, like fundamentally. It's fun to do silly voices. And I, you know what? People tell me I'm wrong. I don't want to be right. So Birmingham to Mogadishu. Okay, we'll trade with Mogadishu. And then Manchester to Mogadishu is my next best trade route. So I'll do that one again. My trade routes are getting a little bit weaker. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This city is going to become huge. This city's going to be huge when I get all these fisheries down. Honestly, I kind of wish this might be where I plunk Pingala later. I mean, right now my capital is the place. Wait, why are wonders giving me culture? Huh? What? Why am I getting culture from wonders? What wonder is giving me culture? What the heck? Wait, why am I getting culture from wonders? Isn't that like a Ludwig thing? I'm so confused. Did, 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 did like some mod activate itself? What? Why am I getting culture from wonders? I don't understand. I really don't understand. Someone's got to explain that in the comments. Jesus. I thought that was a Ludwig thing. All right, we're going to settle on the silk. Perfect. Um, let's immediately get started on the Royal Navy Dockyard. It'll be a plus three. It'll eventually be a plus four, which honestly is a really good time. I'm going to save money for shipyards now. I want to settle for all of this silver. So that is my goal. I think if I settle here, one, two, three... One, two, three. Yeah, we'll get all that silver. Perfect. Perfect. There's mass production giving us access to the shipyard. Now, the shipyard is so good because it gives you bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus of the harbor district and plus one production on all unimproved coast and lake tiles for this city. Super, super good. Now, it does also provide you plus one food and it also scales off trade city states. We also got access to exploration. I'll talk about that. So the trade city states, you can see here, plus four gold in every bank, shipyard and consulate building. So quite good. We're going to get really, really good gold scaling. Um, from going for shipyards and I'm going to go ahead and purchase a shipyard in the capital because that's an eight production building which will shave three turns off the Kilwa and increase the production in the city by about 30%. Now if I refresh the city might rework some tiles. 
But now, as you can see, the coastline, the coastline here is looking quite a bit better. I was hoping that there would be an Auckland in this game, but they have not yet appeared. There are still barb camps that could theoretically evolve. I like the idea of the city being dotted with um, barb camps. I'm going to go take cartography here. The reason I want to take cartography is for the plus two gold from fishing boats. It'll be a four turn thing and I'll get a significant gold boost out of it. Then I also want to get military engineering to get nitre because nitre is a resource that I can use for aero score. We've almost secured a golden age. I'm pretty sure we can secure a golden age, especially because we're about to move into Merchant Republic, which will... We will lose a 15% boost to our great person points, but we'll get a 15% production boost toward districts, which I think is a good compensation, especially because we're going to be building so many districts over the next few eras, like next two eras. Um, plus three eras, score, that's beautiful. Uh, we were actually the first to adopt a tier two government, so we're on really, really good tempo here. Um, now, I really want to plug in Merchant Confederation, so I'm going to drop Diplomatic League just for now. I definitely want Republican Legacy. That's four housing and four amenities, and that scales really well throughout the game. I would love to plug in Oh, I don't have liberalism unlocked yet, but that would be like the next big thing. I also want retainers, so I want to start pl plopping down units inside my cities as guardians. I definitely want to keep naval infrastructure. Serfdom is good. Gothic architecture I'll keep for a little while. That'll eventually get swapped out for something like Trade Confederation. But I think generally this is like a really solid government. Maybe liberalism will get plugged in here so I can get up to three amenities per city. Um, so one thing I definitely need to start doing with my gold is buying scouts. And generally also just moving units around my empire. Like if I have units that aren't garrisoning a city um, and they're just like nearby, I should definitely get them into my cities. Now I wonder, do boats count? I wonder if I move that boat into the city. Can I get this UI refresh? Oh, no, maybe that'll have to refresh over the turn. We'll see. I don't think the better report screen stuff, it only updates in between turns, I think. Oh no, he's going to get up. I might have to, if, if he stands onto this marsh tile, I might have to do a force settle. We'll see. All right, we'll plonk down this city here, plus three error score. So I think that is the Golden Age secured, which puts us into an amazing position to go forward. Um, we're going to go ahead and drop the Royal Navy Dockyard. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on that Royal Navy Dockyard for now. I'm also going to go ahead and drop the pasture here. That plus one production doesn't seem like much, but it legitimately shaved like half the time off this. Plus, it's going to be a plus one food tile that allowed the city to grow. Why are you getting, why are you getting two culture? I don't understand. Oh... <gasps> It's because of Nan Madal. Wayne. Do wonders? Do incomplete wonders count for Nan Madal? Oh my god. That is so overpowered. That's like a mini Ludwig ability. That's insane. Did you guys know about that? That is like a totally new mechanic. Morbis, turn this into a short. Get this clip. I want people to see. Oh my god. This is like this is like the perfect moment to, to, to make a short. We, we're, we're making content. I had no idea. That's insane. We need to test this. I'm going to test this after this game. I will pop a lumber mill here. Normally I would chop, but the city has really bad production and I need to get that Royal Navy Dockyard up. Pasture. It's a really nice three food, two production tile. We love it. My little galley here probably wants to Zoidberg away to a safe place. So go ahead and whoop, 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 whoop away. It's a beautiful day whenever I complete a Petra. Like a Petra and Mausoleum, those are my two favorite wonders. And, and if I can get either one of them in a game, it's just a happy day. Now, I do think the city of Liverpool needs to place its commercial hub now. So it's safe to do that. We're also going to place our aqueduct. Um, we're going to crush these. I would love to faith purchase a builder, but I think I'm going to have to hard build it. I need to get one more mine here and another mine here. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy that tile so that I can get the city up to its true potential. I'm going to say focus on food and production. I need the city to continue to grow. I need more housing in here. So I think I'm going to go for the Royal Navy Dockyard to get the... Not the obelisk. It is a lighthouse. I can get the lighthouse. Let's send a spearman to the capital. So yeah, we're definitely heading into... Uh, I'm going to have to settle on the honey. How badly do I want this honey? I think I want this honey a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and settle this so that I can steal it. Which naturally doesn't feel great, like in terms of being a friend of these guys. But hey, listen. I'm being Navi, okay? Commercial hub here. It's not a great Royal Navy dockyard, but it is a Royal Navy dockyard. And it does help this. I hate that this Royal Navy dockyard sucks. I hate it so much. I wish I could have been able to settle here. Oh, it would have been so much better. We're going to have to do this just to get a Royal Navy dockyard with literally any adjacency. Ugh, maybe we just live. Maybe we just live in Trashville. I hate that I have to do this. It's gross. Honestly, the city depresses me. I'm just going to build a granny in here and pretend it doesn't exist. One thing I should definitely look into is, are there any luxuries that I need to sell? So I could sell whales for 11 gold per turn. I could sell honey for 11 gold per turn. I could sell whales again, whales again, whales again, whales and turtles. And then I will look to purchase some luxuries because I would like to get my cities up into that nice plus three amenity zone. Plus three amenities. I can't believe I have 10 cities, but plus three amenities gets you a 10% yield boost across the entire city. Uh, 20, I believe it's 10% for food, 10% for production, 10% for gold, 10% for amenities, 
and 10% for, sorry, 10% for science, culture, and faith. So it just means like every 10 turns, your city gets an extra turn of production, like an extra turn of yield. Um, and, and that's honestly, that cannot be overstated how good that is. Uh, back when it was 5%, it was weak. Now, these days, now that it's 10%, it's super good. We actually omega overshot our era score on this era. I tend to find I tend to find I do that. Like if I if I'm thinking about era score early enough into the game and my empire is doing reasonably well, I tend to like omega giga overshoot it, which obviously isn't super ideal, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? It looks like this tundra. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy one of these silvers because I want to get it online. There's knowledge of banking that's perfect. We also have military engineering giving us access to the armory and nitre. Uh, we got guilds that's perfect. Um, city of manchester you built your stable i would love to build the armory but that's not on the cards right now right now i need to build a horseman and a catapult ah just a horseman i accidentally researched the unit that comes after catapult that's okay i gotta build a horseman this will be plus one era score plus a envoy i'm more so building it for the envoy uh did i unlock liberalism no i believe liberalism is somewhere over here the enlightenment i think it would be good to go ahead and get diplomatic service things like vessel banking could significantly upgrade the quality of my trade routes to city-states and also give me access to spies. And it would be good to start getting my spies up, I think. The capital is a little bit busy um, with a few different things, but it also needs to get ready to build like another wonder and also the building in here. Plus it needs to build its next district, which will probably be the Diplo Quarter. So, uh, my capital is under a lot of demand here for production, so I need to help it out as much as I can. It would be amazing if I could get the Forbidden City this game too. I definitely want stirrups to be researched, plus one food in my pastures across my empire. I mean, if I just do a quick search for pastures inside England, I have three pastures in my empire. One, two, and three. So that's three food in my empire. Like it's it's not amazing, but for those individual cities, it's actually really significant. Royal Navy Dockyard has been completed in Preston. Let's go ahead and immediately get to work on the lighthouse. We want those extra trade routes. We want that extra food. That's the beauty of lighthouses, right? They give you plus two gold. That's lovely. Um, that's from the city state, the trade city state. You get plus one food on all coast tiles and plus two for housing if the city is adjacent to coast, which it is. So it's just a ton of housing. You get a, a trade route capacity and you get gold, you get housing, you get citizen slots. It's just, they're, they're so beautiful. They're just beautiful, beautiful buildings. They're fun to build. I need a garrisoned unit in here. I need a garrisoned unit in here. Let's bring that swordsman back. I want to build my industry here. This is 20% growth plus three housing in the city. But more importantly, it's also plus one great merchant point per turn. Um, super, super valuable and another pasture. Great. Um, I'm also going to build an industry here. This will be a 25% gold increase, but more importantly, it is actually a very, very viable tile. Three food, two production, four gold. This is going to accelerate the city quite a bit. Taking a look at the city of Sheffield, we are working a four production tile. I think I would rather work the three food tile to allow the city to grow and work more tiles over the course of the game. So I think that's just better. Food early into, like if your city is low on population, more food is a really, really great way to give it a late game. Oh no, he's going to build it. So it was at this moment that I realized that my entire goal this game is to eradicate Korea. So this is, this is the moment that I have decided that this is an air warfare game. We're going to go for the Navy air strategy and I'm going to Kilwa crusade my way across the world if I don't get this Kilwa. I swear to God. I declare forever war on Korea if they steal that. I'm not joking. I am dead serious. And they'll be seriously dead. Yeah, I, I'm a wordsmith, okay? Let's go ahead and build a fishery. The city can have up to 14 population. It's got 26 surplus food. It's growing so incredibly quickly. It's amazing. And I love it. Uh, we can come over here to a city. Let's have a little bit of a think about where we want to build our shipyard. Can I use gold to help this city out? Not really. Okay, so we got to think about where our next shipyard is going. A city of Plymouth. Let's have a look. We'll just go by which shipyard is the best. There's a plus four here in Birmingham. It'll let me get the mausoleum faster. Ergo. Shipyard is a go. Uh, that'll shave four turns off that mausoleum. That's perfect. It's beautiful. Just like the way I talk about your mom. Now, these tundra hills, or, or these tundra tiles, rather, with the forest on them, these are actually hills, so I'm uh, quite happy to chop them because that will finish the Royal Navy Dockyard basically instantly, allowing me to get to work on things like lighthouses. I think, though, we definitely want to get the monument in here so the borders can start expanding. Oh, man. My kill bug got cancelled. Yep, it's time for the Giga Crusade. Alrighty, so... How do you do a Giga Crusade? Well, basically, we are only a few technologies away from it. We're going to be going from aerodromes uh, in combination with uh, flight and submarines. That's going to be our objective. Uh, sorry, not flight, not submarines. Um, airplanes with uh, caravels and frigates. That's the goal. Oh, God, that's uh, 
I could, I, you know, I don't even want to finish these other wonders now. I'm going to build my diplomatic quarter. I'll put it right there. See, I'm going to get my intelligence agency in one turn and then I'll overflow that into a diplo quarter. Yeah, that's annoying. It's very, very annoying. And we can get our spies soon. So we'll need to do that. I'll research humanism and then go for the enlightenment. I want to get enlightenment for the liberalism policy card here so I can power to the late game. I could build a shipyard in here. That's not going to be the goal. I'm going to build a commercial hub. I want to buy my shipyards with gold. It's a way better way to accelerate my empires. Just use the gold because I can buy a shipyard every five turns. You know, so Plymouth to Mogadishu, that could be a potential route. I also want to be looking for um, trading posts. Am I currently trading with Singapore? I'm not currently trading with Singapore, so I'm going to trade with Singapore to get a trading post in Singapore, which might open up future trades with other city states. So even though it's not a particularly good trade route, I am going to look for the best trade route to Singapore, though. It is Manchester to Singapore. So let's go ahead and shift you over to Manchester. Perfect. And don't forget, every time I send a trade route to a city-state, I get plus one envoy with them. So that is also going to scale off of the Merchant Confederation card. The medieval era ends in 10 turns, and we have just become the suzerain of Valletta, which I'm a big fan of. I think we just built a horse, and that gave us suzerainty. We also picked up fishing boat improvements, uh, giving plus two gold, as well as the Casa de Contracion, Contracion and Contration, the uh, Caraval. So we are going to trade with Singapore. I also need to trade with Valletta. I don't think I have a trade with Valletta. No, I do not. So that would be my next ideal location to go with this. Um, I really want to buy a shipyard in here, but it's a little bit out of my reach. Um, I should totally research banking, which is after stirrups, so that's perfect. We can start building our gilded vaults. I'm going to build the armory in Manchester because that actually boosts gunpowder. We've got the Royal Navy Dockyard in Leeds. Let's place the commercial hub. We'll go for the lighthouse immediately. We got a governor title. I think I'm going to hold on to this governor title. We could go for Reina for the double adjacency and tax collector. It's not a terrible move. When do I get my next governor title? It's quite a ways away. And so for that reason, I'm going to hold on to my governor title so that I can immediately unlock the plus one wildcard policy slot, plus two spy capacity, and plus one amenity, amenity when a spy is in our territory. Amenity. Actually, instead of building those, how many amenities? I'm getting seven amenities. So that means there's three cities without garrisons. One, two, three. Right, Manchester, your job then is to build me very cheap garrison units like heavy chariots, which also will nicely translate into tanks later on in the game if I so choose. We got our very first spy. I think I'm more inclined to be looking to steal gold, and it looks like Niani and uh, Mali are in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and start stealing gold from Niani. Hmm, I don't know where I would want this. I think, I think if I could get 100% production in harbors, that'd be quite nice. I'll put like, I guess, six, six votes feels good. Um... How many players are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll put seven votes. That's how, that's all the number of the players. I don't care about this one so much. I'll just say, uh, let's get rid of Buddhism. It's like, pick one at random. It was at the top of the list. So 100% production towards harbors. Now that changes the value proposition of buying harbors. Um, like, massively. Now that I'm building them twice as fast, a 12-turn harbor is honestly pretty viable. I probably will purchase it in here because that's a 10 production harbor right there. Um, but in certain cities, like here, Manchester... A 10 turn harbour is amazing. Um, Birmingham has its harbour. Preston doesn't. Liverpool doesn't. Yeah, I think I think there's got to be certain areas where the 10 turn harbour absolutely makes sense. Nice. We just finished the diplomatic quarter, which is going to give us access to the consulate. And these scale pretty well, plus the plus two influence per turn. Uh, enemy spy level is reduced by one. We also get a little bit of gold, a little bit of science, a little culture, a little bit of faith. And that's only going to get better as the game goes on. I can buy this with gold. So I will. Now, I believe I'm missing a trade route with Valletta. And I want to try to secure not only trade routes with certain city-states, but also trading posts. It might not be worth it to trade with Valletta, though. I don't think that's a particularly important city-state. Um, I don't have the card that doubles my envoys plugged in, so it might not be the best move. I would love to take Suzu of Chinguetti. I want to wait until the next era before I start taking some of these Suzus, though. What have we got in terms of gold? Yeah, it's got to be the Mogadishu route. Boom. It's my best trade route as it currently stands. Let's start building those spies. We will have up to, like, four spies in the next era. Like, we're very soon, we're going to have four spies, like, cranked out and uh, doing work for us across the map, stealing gold, disrupting our enemies, all that yaz. Do you like yaz? Babylon wants a research alliance. I'll take that. Not that it'll benefit me much, but I'll take it. Royal Navy Dockyard is done here in Liverpool. Um, we'll two turn the lighthouse and then we'll five turn the shipyard. That's perfect. Drop another mine here. We've got the fully built Petra. I can delete the Jabba Barkal pin. The city is now cranking out 32 production. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. After the lighthouse, I would like to place the industrial zone. Thank you. 
holding on to those envoys. Lovely. There is Banks Unlocked. This is going to give us access to the Gilded Vault. Um, it's going to be a seven turn build, but it's going to be what? Um, the adjacency of this district, which is six plus so that's six culture. I can double that to 12. I'll also get nine gold, great, great merchant points and an extra trader. So this is just going to scale my empire up insanely to the point where I think it's actually better than spies right now. Definitely better than spies right now. So is there anything here on the bottom half of the tech tree I need to go for now? I don't think so. I think we just go straight for industrialization. And from industrialization, we go straight to flight. And then from flight, we go straight to advanced flight. That is the pathway. Um, we're going for the late game. We're going for the late game push. So industrialization into flight, into radio. If we find aluminium, we're golden. If we don't, we have to pivot. There's humanism giving us access to some museums as well as some cards. We got the lighthouse in Liverpool. Let's immediately go for the shipyard. That's a plus six production shipyard. Um, will be better once we get things like the commercial hub. I might go for the industrial zone first because I already have a ton of commercial hubs um, and I want to get my factories up. So I'll go aqueduct into the commercial hub or maybe industrial, sorry, industrial zone into aqueduct into commercial some some sort of pathway like this because I need to start earning great engineer points I'm a little bit behind on great engineers if I take a look here yeah someone else is earning them I'm behind we're, we're going into renaissance I need to start earning them uh, I'll chop here that'll finish this I'm going to buy the lighthouse and buy the shipyard in here to accelerate this city and then I want you to build a granary monument water mill and then I want you to build a builder. No, I want you to build a builder first because the builder will continue to develop this land. This is the power of having 500 gold per turn. Your empire can just scale so amazingly well. Like fresh cities can be brought online so quickly with a couple of chops, one to two chops, a little bit of gold, and you're good to go. So we want to start stealing gold from Niani. The most efficient way, the most, the reason the most, the reason why I steal gold is because it is the most efficient mission you can do against the deity level AI. The deity level AI gets an 80% boost to their gold income, which means effectively that the siphon funds mission gets an 80% boost to its effectiveness, right? So if I do gain sources, I'll bring this up to about 80 something percent success rate, maybe 90% success rate, depending on if this guy catches a level or what my upgrades are. Uh, I could just consistently steal like 700 gold every eight turns, which is like 100 gold per turn from a spy, which is an insane return on investment. Um, so it's absolutely just worth it to steal gold in almost every case. A very, you know, sometimes it's worth it to break space ports and stuff like this. Generally speaking, when you're playing against a deity AI, stealing cash is the thing to do. And also defending your commercial hubs. So we're getting plus one science, plus one faith, and plus one culture on all coast tiles for the city with the mausoleum. And great engineers have an additional charge. This really combos really nicely with the pathway that we're going this game. I'm loving it. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Uh, so... Now, take a look at these stats. Oh my God, look at these tile yields. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to grab myself a quick builder. Um, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to get my industrial zone. I'm going to get my um, campus down. That's a plus two. So I'll place my campus. I need to get my market and my gilded fault, but I want to finish the industrial zone because I want to start earning great engineer points. We can get another great admiral. I'll go ahead and recruit him. I'll put him to sleep for now because he's not very useful. We could hard build a shipyard. I'm not going to. I'm going to buy it with gold. That's a 10 production building, right? I can get it this turn or I can wait 17. I'm going to get it this turn for a thousand gold. That's 10 production. That literally doubles the city's production. It more than doubles the city's production, right? It goes from eight to 19. It's a huge, huge production. It actually went from eight to 20. So that was like 1.25 times. Went up by like 200 and something percent. It was like an insane rate. Uh, that's why th th this harbor strategy, right? Where you go for a very gold heavy early game. Super fun, super powerful. Also, uh, we have 12 trade route capacity. I don't know where we got 12 trade route capacity from. What? I'm not going to complain, but I don't know where we got 12 trade route capacity. I'm going to go ahead and faith purchase a... Oh, I'm Susan of Valletta. Oh, that's really handy, actually. I'm going to fa faith purchase a trader here in England so that I may send trade routes to some of these city-states over here, like Nalanda, Armagh, Granada. It'll be good to get, start getting trading posts over here. We'll start to look around, see what we can do. I really want to be Susan of Cinguetti because the amount of faith that that is going to give me is insane. Square rigging. I think the medieval era ends in one turn. We definitely want to plug in liberalism. I'm going to drop gothic architecture. I'm going to plug in liberalism. That's plus four amenities. We're getting a huge amount of amenities here. Uh, that brings us up to eight of our cities in ecstatic mode, getting a 20% boost to their yields. Okay, 20% boost to their yields. That's crazy. Any luxuries I can buy? Yeah, I can buy a sugar as well. Can't buy any great works. Can't buy any strategics. Don't need to buy any strategics. Can sell off some stuff here. A little bit of silver to sell off and some whales. Anyone want to buy 
some of these luxuries or these strategics rather. I can sell off some nitre. I probably shouldn't sell nitre. I should sell everything but nitre. I regret selling my nitre because I'm going to need that to build my fleet, my frigate fleet. That's going to be what we get to work on. All right, so we got mercantilism. Would be great to go for that. The next step for us, I think, is to head towards nationalism because this will allow us to build another spy so we can start to get our spy stuff online. It'll also give us a governor title. Let me have a look at the trade routes that are available over here. Oh yeah, we can trade with Nalanda, get an envoy. Is this our first envoy with Nalanda? It's not our first envoy with Nalanda. So this trade route will actually get us two envoys, which is perfect. Starting to build up that relationship. We have the industrial zone in Birmingham. So what's the next step for us? Um, I suppose it depends on what missions we get. That's going to be the big thing. I'll go ahead and just build a granary for two turns to delay the city's decision making, essentially. We managed to get the commercial hub in Plymouth. We're going to go for the market into the Gilded Vault. We got the monument in Sheffield. I'm going to use my gold income. I would like to get the lighthouse and the shipyard. So I'll buy the lighthouse and I'll see if anyone will buy like a hundred Diplo favor for a little bit of gold. There we go. A little bit of cash, right? So next turn I should be able to buy the shipyard in here as well. Man, look at that. So many trade routes. So yeah, it'll take me a few turns to catch up to my infrastructure demands. But once I do, my empire is going to be in absolutely fantastic shape. Once I start finishing Gilded Vaults, I'll probably want to plug in Commercial Hub Adjacency as well. Right, let's pop back up to Sheffield. We'll go ahead and gold purchase the shipyard in here. That's another 10 production. Again, just doubling the city's potential, literally in a single click. So we have a few choices we can go for here. We could go for um, Reform the Coinage. This would give us a lot of protection for our trade routes. We could also go for Monumentality, take Susan to of Chinguetti, and then use our faith to like accelerate this era even further. So I think that's what I want to do. I'll take Susan to of Chinguetti. And now I need to figure out uh, what my majority religion is. So let me have a look at my religion here. So it looks like there's a little bit of religious disagreement in my cities. I'm going to go ahead and choose to adopt Catholicism. Um, Defender of the faith is nice. Don't really care about much else. I'm just choosing to adopt it because it's convenient. Um, the city of Manchester has like a reasonable holy site right there. I'll pop down that holy site, finish that shipyard, cancel that night. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to move some traders over to Sunderland because there's a few cities over here that I haven't actually established trade routes with. And if I can start to get those trade routes going, it'll start to build up my relationship with them. So I need to get all my infrastructure up and then I need to start buying settlers again because they are cheap this era. That's something I need to remember. There's just not enough gold to go around. That's the reality of the situation. It never feels like there's enough gold. Um, Gilded Vault completed in the capital. Now we're cranking out a really healthy... Huh? What? What? Am I... Oh, there it is. Plus eight culture from the commercial hub. Sorry, I couldn't see it there for a second. I was like, huh, where is this? Where is this yield? So we could gain three governor promotions and all cities not in my capital continent, but a governor would get a boost. We could also build Taj Mahal. Not particularly interested in those. I would like to get my spies. I'd also like to get my chancery. I'm going to go ahead and gold purchase my chancery here. That's plus three influence per turn, giving me more control over city states, which is the name of the game here. And we will go ahead and grab those spies. Let's go ahead and use our governor title here. Oh, industrial era. Oh, it's the Renaissance era. Oh, I'm, I, I completely jumped the gun here. I thought we were heading into the industrial. Just got a little bit turned around, so I don't actually need this. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.